Again, welcome to System Analysis and Design. This is Unit 1, Part 1 Lectures. Our main objective in these lectures is to go through the system development life cycle and also career paths for system analysis. So a system development life cycle is the process of determining how an information system can support a business needs. Also be able to design the system, build the system or implement it and deliver it to the users. So a system development life cycle involving planning, analyze the system, designing it, implement it, testing it before deliver to the users. Now the key person in the system development life cycle is the system analysis, who analyze the business situations, also the requirements, uh, both functional requirements and non-functional requirements, and identify the opportunities for improvement, designing the system and also implementing it for improvement. A system analysis plays a very vital key role in information system development projects as a system analysis always works closely with all project team members so that the team develops the right system in an effective way. So system analysis must understand how to apply technology in order to solve the problems. Also a system analysis may serve as a change agent who identify organizational improvement needed, also design the system to implement those changes and also train and motivate others to use the system. So when again, a project is getting initiated as a system analysis, we must be able to again, come up with the requirements. This requirement may be getting from the project sponsors, the users, or if there's an old system already, maybe the manual, the technical information by the old system, can be applied to the new system and again, improve it. So as a system analysis, these are some, some of the few skills we must have. A technical skill, system analysis must understand the technical environment, the technical foundation, and also the technical solution. In terms of business, must understand how the IT can be applied to the business situation. So it depends on the type of business, either banking, medicine, et cetera. As a system analysis, you must understand the boundary, you must understand the system of uh, the business operations. Also must have analytical skills, must be able to solve problems. So as a problem solver skills. Interpersonal skills need to communicate effectively Management skills also need to manage people and also manage resources, pressures, and risk that involve in the project. Also must have an ethical skills, must deal fairly, honestly, and ethically with other project members, managers, and system users. System analysis roles uh, can be business analysis. As a business analysis, it will focus on the information system issues surrounding the system and also focuses on the business issues surrounding the system. And infrastructure analysis also will focus on technical issues. Change management system focuses on the people and the management issues surrounding the system installation. Project manager will ensure, ensure that the project is completed on time and within budget, and that the system de delivers the expected value to the organization. Now, as a system analysis, we can work as a business analysis, infrastructure analysis, change management analysis, or project manager. So a system analysis can be a project manager. Now, what are the career paths for system analysis? And we start with the entry level business function specialist or entry level programmer slash analysis. Most, uh, most uh, computer consulting firms or companies, a system analysis also can be a programmer. But some bigger companies, 
we may have a programmer different from a system analysis. So first requirement analysis is one of the most important functions in, again, as a system analysis. And we will discuss more detail what is a requirement. We have two types of requirement, functional requirement and non-functional requirements. So when we are going to develop a system, the functional requirement will be the tax or the functions that the system will perform. Non-functional requirement will be the characteristics of the system. Uh, we'll say the quality of the system. For example, the system is user friendliness. Is the system have a good security or the performance, the speed, etc. These are all non-functional requirements. So a requirement analysis, business analysis, system analysis, infrastructure. So when we look at the requirement analysis, we can see that as an entry-level business function specialist, common path is to work as a requirement analysis or business analysis, system analysis infrastructure. And same thing applied to entry-level programmer analysis also. But most programmers may be very, it's less common to see a programmer working as a requirement analysis. It's not very common. From there, we may have a chain management system. So as a requirement analysis, is easily to get into chain management system position. Business analysis can easily get to either project manager or also change management system. Then as a system analysis or infrastructure analysis, it's more easy to get into a software architectural field. So we start with the system development life cycle. Here we have four different stages. The first stage is planning. This is where we get our main objective together. We do our feasibility studies, et cetera, to see the risks and benefits of the system. Then we go through the analysis. This is where we get our requirements and design what should be our input, what should be our output. Then on the design phase is where we again design the algorithm that can transform the input to output. Then if we finish with the designing, then we move to implementation. This is where we develop the system using any type of computer programming language. So we start with the four different stages. As we said, the first phase is planning, analysis, design, and implementation. Now, each of the phases is composed of different steps, which also rely on the techniques that produce the specific document that explain various elements of the system. So we start with the planning. This phase is the fundamental process of understanding why an information sh system should be built. So here we have to do our feasibility studies with the benefits and the risk that is involved. We can, we can do technical feasibility uh, to save the technologies, a new technology or old technology. Will the chance of having a system failure, most likely if it's a new technology instead of old technology that has been used before. So we need to, again, plan all this, especially the studies, feasibility analysis. And also we have to determine how the project team will go about building it. Now the planning phase has two steps. We have the project initiation. Here the system business value to the organization is identified. How will it lower costs or increase revenues? So project initiation is kind of the same concept as feasibility analysis. Then we move to the project management. The project manager will create a work plan, the staffs, the project, and put the techniques in place to help the project team control and direct the project through the entire software development life cycle. Now in the analysis phase, we answer questions as who will use the system what the system will do, where and when it will be used. So during this phase, the project team investigate any current system, if there's an old system already, identify improvement opportunities and develop a concept for the new system. And this is where again, our main focus, focus will be on the requirement analysis. So the analysis phase have three, three steps, analysis strategy, 
This is developed to guide the project team's efforts. This includes the study of the current system and its problems and envision ways to design a new system. Now, requirement gathering, the analysis of this information leads to the development of a concept for the new system. Now, this concept is used to build a set of analysis models. Then we have the system proposal. The proposal is presented to the project sponsor and other key individuals who decide whether the project should continue to move forward. So those are the three steps in analysis phase. Then the design phase, here we are going to design and decide how the system will operate in terms of the hardware, the software, network infrastructure, user interface forms and reports that will be used. And also any specific programs, database system files that will be needed. Now the design phase are four steps. First is the design strategy. Here we are going to clarify whether the system will be developed by the company or outside the company. Then we have the architectural design. This will describe the hardware, the software, the network infrastructure that will be used. Then database and file specification. These documents define what and where the data will be stored. And then the program design, which defines again what program need to be written and what they will do. So this is a place where we almost design the whole infrastructure of the system. The implementation, this is where the system is either developed or purchased and in the case of a package software and installed. This phase is usually the longest and most expensive part of the system. But this is where again, if it's a computer programming language, what type of language we are going to use, what type of platform we are going to use to develop the system or implement the system. So the implementation phase has three steps, system construction, the system is built and tested to make sure it performs as designed. Then the installation, the old system turn off and the new system is turned on. Then we may have a support plan which include the post implementation review as well as systematic way for identified changes needed for the system. Next, we move to the project identification and initiation. Normally a project is identified when someone in the organization identify a business need to build a system. So a, a need may surface when an organization identifies a unique and competitive ways of using IT or information technology. Also to leverage the capability of emerging technologies such as cloud computing, radio frequency ID, web 2.0, etc. So next we go through the concept of business process management. As we know nowadays, many new information system projects grow out of, again, business process management. A business project process management is a methodology that is used by organizations to continuously improve the end-to-end -end business process. So the BPM or business process management process define and also mapping the steps in business process. Also it creates ways to improve on the steps in the process that will hard follow. Also finding ways to eliminate or consolidate steps in the process that do not hard values. Creating and also adjusting electronic workflow to match the improved process maps. We also have the business process automation, business process improvement, and also business process re-engineering. And we may go more detail in these topics in our future lectures. But in short, business process automation is the technology components that are used to complement or substitute manual process. Then business process improvement is creating a new or redesigning process to improve the workflows and or to utilize a new technology enable a new process structures. Then business process re-engineering is changing the fundamental way in which the organizational 
to operate. We also have a project sponsor. So a project sponsor normally is a person or a group who has interest in the system success. So a project sponsor will work through the software development life cycle to make sure that the project is moving in the right direction from the perspective of the business. Also a project sponsor serves as a primary point of contact for the project team. Now the size or the scope of the project will determine by the kind of sponsor that is involved. Also the project sponsor has the insight that is needed to determine the business value that will be gained from the system. A tangible value can be quantified and measured easily. For example, reduction in operating business. But an intangible value results from an intuitive belief that the system provides important but hard to measure benefit to the organization. This can be a customer service improvement. It's very hard to quantify it. We also have a system request. A system request is a document that describes the business reasons for building a system and also the value that the system is expected to provide. So the project sponsor usually complete this form as part of the formal system selection process within the organization. And the business requirements of the project refer to the business capabilities that the system will need to have. The business value again describes the benefit that the organization should expect from the system. Special issues are included on the document as a catch-all category for other information that should be considered in assessing the project. Now the completed system request form must be submitted to the approval committee for consideration. Now the committee will review the system request and makes an initial determination of whether to investigate the proposed project or not. If so, the next step is to conduct the feasibility analysis. So in our next lectures game, we may go more details about the concept of project management. We will talk about different type of feasibilities, requests and process, initiation of project process, et cetera. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.